You're going to feel the love coming from your triceps. I'm going to screen start that. And it's going to flow to your shoulders and come right across, man, at the top of your chest. It's a nice feeling, man. It's kind of like a little family love. You start with one kid and it spreads to a brother, to across the other side. The whole family gets a little love, man. You know, a bit unorthodox, abnormal, but abnormal ensures there's, no going, there's never going to be normal. You know, you do a little extra effort here. You take whatever's normal and you do a little extra to it. That's what, Kate, that's what makes it extraordinary. Look at the wording, ordinary plus a little extra. What's that extra? You know, that's what makes the difference, man. The extra rep. Getting up an extra half hour earlier. Saying you're sorry to somebody one extra time. Those little extras combined to a word called extra with ordinary together to make extraordinary. There's a real positive confidence of the individual that goes through an endeavor this time of night when everyone else society says it's time to sleep we say it's time to get ahead it's addictive when you start feeling the pain here it's because you're focusing on the pain you don't feel the pain unless you focus on it you don't focus on it even though we're here physically mentally we're going to drift somewhere else I like that person that actually puts the effort in and then goes beyond what they felt they could do. What was that thing that came in there and made me do that? The more you exercise it, the stronger you get. It's perishable. Use it or lose it. The more and more you do it, the more and more you feel it. Find it. Believe it. Become it.
that pain you feel, that's the payment of success. You must be willing to shoulder that pain to get the success. Success is something that's a very lonely path in this world. Because few are willing to make that down payment of pain, that future minute of success, a better life. Very few are. And when you get the success, what comes with that is many, many that love you, but the majority will hate you for it. Because your success is a spotlight shining down on their missed opportunities, where they came up short, where they didn't quite have it inside, and never went back to revisit it. Where failure is what stood, and so they've been proving failure for success. Failure is part of the recipe for success. You fail a thousand times before you succeed. Every single person has. It's the, it's the losers that fail once and quit. Every winner has done failed. The loser and the winner both fail. It's just that the winner gets back up and does it again. Very lonely road successes. Know that going to. But it's the only road that will lead to a life of memories.
Don't be confused with the pain, man. You feel the pain? Because you're focusing on it. You're focusing on the negative energy of the pain. Focus on the positive energy of the pain. That pain is letting you know you're fixing something that's insufficient in your life. If you're room for strength, growth, the belief to come out from the cracks. So no longer are you going to be a subject matter bullshitter. You're going to be a subject matter fucking expert. Two more. That right there, guys. It's one set of many. When you go to that kind of level, where maybe mentally, you're like, I don't know if I can achieve five reps, six reps, whatever else. But you don't allow that to set in. That's the energy source of society that robs you of potential. You don't listen to that. You say every more rep, every rep I do is something I grow from. The only reps we don't grow from are the reps we don't do. You allow yourself to believe that. With that belief comes more energy out of fucking nowhere. And you finish the rent. You finish the set. Achieving what you thought you couldn't achieve. You sit here exhausted. After one set of many to go. And this sitting this one down, eight exercises, three sets. 24. 23 more to go. But not drained by it. Excited about it. Because what just happened there, I created value in myself. I saw adversity. I saw how my body was failing. That's okay. Because that's not who I am. This is where I am. I push past that. By pushing past that, once I sit here now, done. The pain is gone. What's left now, pride, felt. For a job well done. Excited. To do some more good work in the future here. In this hour and a half, I've dedicated myself to the betterment of myself. Is that mentality. That makes second place the first move of that. You do that shit every single day. You build first class status. You continue to do it. You always have first class status. Next. When the winds of life don't hit your sail, you grab the fucking oar of life. And you start pushing your body, your boat, your vessel into the harbor of a known point that you want to be, man. No one's gonna fucking get you there. You gotta get yourself there. I can tell you how it's hard to get off the couch and take that one step towards greatness. I can tell you how hard that is. I can also tell you how hard it is. Ten times harder looking back on your life as time expires knowing you could have been great. I can tell you how the worst failure in life isn't the person that fell down. It's the person that never got out the trap. It's not about the opportunities given to you. It's about the opportunities you create. Let's tear this motherfucker up.
here this late. It's our home. Our home. Nobody else. This is our arena. This is our lab where we do all the work. Champions aren't found on the podium with their hand up. No. Champions are found in the lab studies. The thousands of hours of hard work when no one's watching. That's what makes the will unstoppable. When you're in here and no one else is. And you're pushing yourself harder than anybody with no one around. That right there, guys, is a spark that catches flames. Burns every fear down, guys. Some fear people use and it, and it, and it enables them, fear does. You know, it's a block to them. They're scared from it, they run from it. Fear, you know, shuts them down. For others, fear's a motivation. I feel fear now, and I tackle it so I never have to fear or feel it again. So Gus got a video blog for you. Um, this one comes from Matt. He's a student at Penn State studying. Get his doctorate in physical therapy. Um, it's a uh, quarter to five in the morning right now. I've been up all night working on the computer, preparing for an opportunity I've been blessed with. An opportunity that um, could be a game changer in my life. Um, an opportunity I don't want to watch go by. So I'm giving it all I have, leaving it all on the table. So no matter what happens, I can never wonder what if. I can never let regret set in saying I should have pushed even more. I'm giving everything I have, leaving nothing to spare. That's all you can do in life. I bring that up because this email comes from Matt. He's written me two emails, one on motivation. Um, this one that I'm going to go into is about the art of burning out. Um, now it's about to go to bed and uh, Ran through a few emails and ran across this one from Matt and I just jumped on him. This is perfect time to go into this right now, especially with the new year coming up. We all have all these great monumental tasks we're going to achieve this year, right? We're going to get that monkey off our back. We're going to turn, take these dreams that we've been buried inside of us. We're going to bring them up and surface them into reality. We're going to do all this year, this year, right? This might help you kind of get the mental edge. Um, this might be a little abrasive, guys. And um, I'm not calling Matt out, I'm not calling you guys out. Uh, I'm just gonna paint a picture, and if the shoe fits, let me know how comfortable it feels after this video blog. When I was at West Point, um, they had these posters, propaganda, right? Academic hallways. And there's one that uh, got like burned in my head and ingrained so deeply. I think about it all the time. Uh, it's a picture of a soldier um, in his battle uniform. And his head, you know, buried on top of a coffin. And um, <clears throat> the same was uh, burning the midnight oil. I said picture is a thousand words. Well, I think that was about a million. Because what that's saying is that you burn the midnight oil now. And if you don't, and all you have left, if it doesn't go your way, and in this case, the leader is looking at a subordinate who's dead, probably because of his lack of leadership. He didn't study hard enough leadership. He didn't study enough the, the tactics and the battle drills. His lack of effort put someone's life in danger and is now perished because of it. So you burn the midnight oil. Otherwise, you stay awake in the midnight hours. Trying to find peace. Which can't happen. That's email. Um, I'm going to skip down, he, he wrote a, a um, very nice email, very long, um, but um, 
I'm just gonna skip down to the bottom part here. He goes, he goes, I was wondering along your own personal tricks to not burning out and having absolutely zero motivation levels to continue because many of us can go two or three months. But what do you do to survive the entire week, the entire month, the entire year, to be consistent enough to just show up every day? In class at Penn State, we talk about a max of four hours of physical and or mental work towards a sport, which is the max before it will start to attribute to burning out, as well as a ton of other stuff. But all of that is theoretical, and you are the living proof of how not to burn out year after year. People like you are the litmus of where, these, where this education comes from. So, in a sense, forget about the 10,000 or whatever hours of perfect practice to become an elite and all that other junk. I just like to hear from a horse's mouth, no offense, the real deal. Thanks, Matt. Matt, you're talking about, uh, you know, four hours, mental or physical strain for a sport until it starts to attribute to burning out. I would hope it doesn't take four hours. I would hope it would take 30 seconds. Because last I looked, that happens on every motherfucking set of every workout of every exercise, of every time we go to the gym, is it not? Burning out does not exist in the physical state. It only exists in the mental state. Meaning, physically, if you do not burn out, if you do not take every set to failure and beyond, and push yourself and burn out, you will not grow. You must go through the flames of burning out to find strength and growth physically. And after your workout, after every single set, and every single rep, you give it all you had, and your partner pushes you past failure two or three reps, and you burn out, and you burn out, and you burn out. The end state, when the smoke clears, and the dust settles, the visual representation of what you've seen is a stronger fundamental physical structure than when you started that workout that day. That's great. That's a big positive. You cannot grow physically without burning out physically. So how do you burn out mentally? You burn out mentally, guys, simply by not burning out physically. Let me go into detail. When you push yourself to your limit and beyond physically, past what you mentally think you can, because last night I looked, your bicep won't send a message up to your brain saying, hey, I'm done it, man, that's it, I'm tapped out. That's all I got, man, throw in the towel. No. The mental message comes from your brain down to your body and shuts you off physically every single time. You would never fail physically. You always fail mentally. Your brain tells your body when it's physically done. Even though physically you might go even further. So, in those situations, like I was always saying, get a partner in the gym, you're hitting failure, you can't go anymore, and your partner's like, free roll! And he pushes you past what you mentally thought you could do. And you stand up off after that set, like, oh my god. Wow. Maybe I'm a little stronger than I thought I was. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Maybe I can do more than I think I could. And what just happened right there is the birth of success. Mentally now, you have confidence. And you can overcome your current limitations. Exceed them, push them, grow them. You become a stronger physical structure. That gives you mental toughness, mental confidence that you can take not just in the gym, but every endeavor in life and transform yourself. So the fire in your brain, confidence, starts to grow and ignite and get hotter and start and get bigger. It doesn't burn out. But if you go into the same workout, you know, and you start to feel a little tired, it's getting there, you're like, ah, that's, that's good, that's good. You never hit failure. You never burn out physically. Well, you're not gonna grow physically. So mentally, you're like, after a couple of months, you're like, man, I keep going to the gym every time. I'm looking in the mirror, I'm not seeing any results. This isn't working, fuck it, I'm done. It's not working. I quit too, man, I quit too. If I put in countless hours every single day into some endeavor, right, and saw no result, no results, no progress, no satisfaction, I 
quit too. Fuck. Burned out, man. I tried it, didn't work. Done. Why? Because you didn't go to physical exhaustion. You didn't go to your limit and beyond. You didn't burn yourself out. You didn't leave it all there. You didn't burn the midnight fucking oil. Every morning, guys, I wake up, I look in the mirror, anxiety fills me, stressed out. There's not enough time. I'm, I'm out of time. I'm running out. I haven't become the person I want to be yet. And I don't know how much more time's left. Maybe today's the only day I got. I don't know. But there's so much to do and so little time. That's all I keep thinking about. I never sit back and settle and, you know, and relax on past fucking accomplishments or anything else. Bullshit. I live in the fucking present or the future. Never live in the past. I never relish in anything I used to do. All that shit's great. I'm not proud of it. That shit is, is me who I am now, strong enough to tackle the next endeavor, the next endeavor, the next endeavor. Always looking forward, never looking back. I can sit here and be your mom, guys, be your buddy, and say, you know what? It doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's how you play the game. It's all about making sure you have fun in life. Yeah. You know, money can't buy happiness. Yeah, well, being broke can't buy it either, you know? So happiness either exists or doesn't exist. You know, call me materialistic, but I think if you're happy and you have money, it's a lot more happier than if you're happy and broke. And if you're gonna go and play the game and lose, or play the game and win, I think it's more fun to play and to win. So why not do that? So I can sit here and tell you about, you know, you know, all the things you should do to keep motivated, not burn out, or I can open up my voices in my head to you. Tell you what they think. Publicly, let them all out to you. Let you know how crazy my fucking mental capacity is at times. So I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror. I see failure every day. I do. I'm like, man, you're not there yet. I don't know if you got any more time left. You better, you better make today count. That's what I think. You know, some people find that a disease. Some people find that a blessing. But these voices speak two different paths in life. I'm gonna explain both paths. And I'm gonna ask you which one is harder. Your first path, every single day, you give an hour, two hours into some endeavor to become better in that endeavor, whether it's going to the gym and killing it, or if it's studying to be a, a, math, a math, mathematician or a doctor, or you want to be an equestrian, you're putting in time every single day. Matt writes, 10,000 hours of perfect practice will make you an elite. You can't do 10,000 hours in one day, no. You can do two or three hours every single day. And they add up and add up and add up and that huge dream that you guys was, was thought was like so far out there, like the moon, I could never reach that. It comes closer and closer and closer and you become a member of that elite crowd. That one or two percent of society that actually does it. When I say one or two percent guys, millions have tried these dreams and millions have failed, one or two percent achieve it. Because they had the right fire, the right fuel inside of them to make it happen. If you're a golfer out there, one or two percent of all golfers shoot under a hundred. One or two percent of all people that actually exercise actually have abs. Very small margins. But someone's done it though. The path has been beaten. It has been laid. It is achievable. It's not impossible. But no going into it. It's going to take every ounce of you have, every, all your guts, all your strength, and then more to make that a reality. 10,000 hours is probably cutting it short. But if we break that down, that big gigantic goal into daily achievable goals, the one path I'm talking about, hour, two hours, every single day, sweat equity, you know, dedication, sacrifice. 
but you get knocked down. You find the intestinal fortitude to get up and face that failure again, head on. It might knock you on your ass again, but you get back up and you keep trying until you overcome that. And when you overcome that, boom, another nugget of confidence, mental strength, another log in the mental fire to keep it lit so it doesn't burn out. It's hard work. I'm not saying it isn't. Every day you go in the gym and you just give it all you got. You come out drained, man. Physically drained, mentally sharp, mentally proud. Feeling a sense of accomplishment, pride, empowerment. That's path A. It's not easy, man. It's every single day routine. You gotta give it every single day, an hour, two hours, every single day. The other option, path B. The beaten path, the path most people travel on. Why? Because it's easy. It's comfortable, it feels good. They're not putting themselves to the fire. They're not gonna risk it. There's no failure for them because they never show up. And they talk the game, but they don't walk it. They have a good life, you know, whatever. They have their ups, their downs, you know. The small successes here and there. That's path B. Path A, pretty fucking hard, right? Path B, it's pretty easy. Problem with path B, though, guys, is that later in life, there's going to come a moment where the windows of opportunity will start closing every day as you get older. And you're going to sit back and you're going to wonder, hmm, I wonder what could have been if I applied a little bit more, push myself a little bit more. I didn't party so much and actually worked, study a little harder where I could be right now. Hmm. Now, those people will never bring those opinions out publicly. They bury them inside the truth. They bury it deep. They don't want anyone to know what they're really thinking about. But as soon as they start thinking about that question, then every second of every day, for the rest of their life, they're spent debating an unsolvable battle. Because you can't change it then. It's too late. All you can do is sit there and wonder what if. So here are these two paths. One path, you give it your all for an hour and a half every single day. The other path, you give it every second of every day for the rest of your life with no resolve. I'd rather give it an hour and a half a day than every second the rest of my life. You know, they say life, right? It's not a measure of the moments you take a breath, but a measure of the moments that take your breath away. What does that mean? Well, as we embark on the new year, last celebration, got the new year's coming in. Um, we got Super Bowl coming up. Um, we got a bunch of Sunday, the Saturdays that people go out and party. We got some birthdays maybe, whatever it may be, Valentine's Day. Um, all these um, universal holiday, universal celebrations that everyone, you know, has a membership card to participate in. And they celebrate with everybody. My question to you is, when was the last time you celebrated a personal achievement? Well, you overcame something that everyone thought you couldn't. Well, better yet, you overcame something that you didn't think you could overcome. That's a celebration right there that takes your breath away. That's the celebration where you taste the success. And once you taste that, guys, you wonder how you ever live without it. You don't taste it on the couch, going down path B. No, you don't. Success is not a measure of where you are. It never has been. It's not about how many plastic trophies you have on the mantle. All those plastic trophies, all they are, are just representations of the memories of what success really is. Because success is a measure of the obstacles you've overcome to get where you are. It's not where you are. You know, these champions in life, right? A lot of guys that go to the gym, 
and um, the non-champions. They go to the gym and uh, just to be seen at the gym, you know, hey, I've got a membership card, I'm in here and doing this, you know. And uh, they leave the gym and they uh, go grab a beer or something or whatever it is. Yeah, it's got back from the gym, you know how it is. Yeah, you know. The fuck you do in the gym, man? Well, you just go to the gym so you can come out and boast about it, tell everybody how great you are because you went to the gym. We're supposed to bat you on the fucking back. What the fuck you at the gym for? What's your purpose? If you don't have a purpose to your action, your action won't have any results. I guarantee you that person's in the gym just to check the box saying he's been there. Mm -hmm. He hasn't pushed himself to physical burning out. So therefore, he's never going to see any success in the gym. Therefore, he's never going to fall in love with the process and the sweat equity of it and the mind-body connection you never get. And sure enough, that gym membership will go unused very shortly. And he'll burn out. Champions don't see the gym has worked. Champions see the gym as a means to the end, a means to get stronger. Champions love failure. They love pain. Because pain to them is weakness leaving their body, making room for strength. They love failure in the gym or failure in training. Because that's when they can improve it and make it stronger. So at the final hour, the final judgment, at the big competition, they do not fail. Because you can't fail then. Burn the oil now. Burn the midnight oil now. Go in the gym and fail as much as you can. Push yourself to failure every single time. That's your witness test that Mark's talking about. To find out where your shortcomings are. So you can apply your efforts to improve the weak link in the chain of life. To make yourself stronger, more capable of achieving these dreams we're all setting for ourselves going into 2011. You gotta earn them, guys. You can't buy them. You can't inherit them.
You must believe in yourself enough to be the person now of what others will remember you for later. You know, a lot of people don't know that. They sit there and they do, they put the effort in because they want to change, right? They put all this effort in, you know, to do what they think is right, but they haven't done the back research preparing it to make sure their effort is accordance of where they want to go in life. So they end up just doing random shit. They put the dumb and random there because they don't even know what they're really doing because they haven't studied it. They haven't prepared for it. And when you fail to prepare, you basically are preparing to fail. Companies don't come knocking on the door. They present themselves when you knock the fucking door down. It's not about how you fucking look in the mirror. It's how you feel right now that, that you did it right today. You feel alive, man. dreams you want to be. I was going to give them to you, man. You got to take what's yours out there, man. Don't apologize for it. Just own up to it, man. It's my man, Frank. You know? Enjoy. That's how we go here, Miami. Yeah. This is Miami right here, brother. That's how we do it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, blogs and stuff for these forums that people write with these fucking keyboard rangers that have no other life, so they sit there and fucking type away because they feel like they got some fucking set of nuts behind a keyboard. But in person or in life, they fucking these little hermit crabs going around and just hiding out and everything else because they don't have the intestinal fortitude to do anything but talk to talk behind a fucking computer. They can't walk shit, man. That's why they that's why they had the fucking time to even comment on someone else's achievements out there. Fuck those motherfuckers, man. Don't be those guys. Come in here, man. You go in there and you fucking kill it. And when you kill it in there, man, you come out here, you I don't give a shit what goes down. Part of your day is fucking a check, man. You did it right. And when you do it right once, it makes it easier the second time to do it right later in the day. It's, it, it's a wave of positive energy, man. Domino salt, man. We call it assault because you're assaulting an objective. That objective is the high ground of life that you want to get to. It's within your grasp. If you're willing to fucking give up that sweat equity, man, come in there and sacrifice a little bit of pain for pride, man. If you're able to do that, man, on a daily basis, and you check the box and you pay your dues every single day, man, then that and anything else out here is within your grasp. That's when life becomes exciting. That's when you're fucking driving it, man. You're the master of your life. You're not the servant anymore. You are running the fucking day. The day is not running you. That's the, that's that is that is freedom, guys. Freedom. You gotta go in there first, man. The devil's den, you know. Pay your dues. You gotta, you know, face your fears to find that freedom. Very quick. Thanks for watching. Down with salt, man. Go out and get your six pack. It's there for you. We're building a body and a mind and the ability of this together, my body, to transform other people. That's built rep by rep, day by day, belief to belief, failure to strength. That's what it's all about. That's what this workout's about. It's not Armageddon. Armageddon, yes, because we're destroying the disbelief that you can only be so far. We're encouraging the unknown belief inside of you guys and everyone has. It just needs birth to. That belief is a way, tsunami, that going over what you thought you only could be into epicness of so many people with far less talent than you, far less ability, and achieve far greater than you because they have a missing element belief. Play on words, arm work out, arm and get it. We're going to change that all up. Arm and get some. Arm and get some. We're going to get our life right now. We're going to get that eulogy that we're going to speak. We don't live forever. Our legacy is. Every day forward is a better day. No longer are we going to accept rhymes 
and society trying to reason that we are average. You have a purpose in life. You will be remembered. Just believe in what you're doing. You will be it soon enough. your body in motion, you will remain in motion, not just in the gym, but outside the gym, your mind's in motion, everything's in motion, and when everything's in motion, what happens, you give birth to new opportunities. brain surgery motherfuckers all you gotta do is work I was like how do I get in shape how do I get in shape and I see these people coming in the gym day after day day after day they got a dedication they show up they show up they show up transformation nothing nothing because the majority of the time what they're doing here they jaw jam they're working that fucking jaw muscle too much if you guys are spending three minutes in between sets you might as well have just started because it's too much recovery time you know, the, the growth comes from hitting it, exhausting it, finding the burn, and keeping the burn alive. If you take too much time in between sets off, the fire goes out. 
That fire is what heats up that clay and you can start molding it. Don't let it go out, guys. Let it go out when you leave here, when you give all the nutrition, you build. Don't talk in here. Perform in here. When you perform in here, when you go up there, you don't need to talk, do you? No. your body in motion, you will remain in motion. Not just in the gym, but outside of the gym. Your mind's in motion, everything's in motion. And when everything's in motion, what happens? You give birth to new opportunities.